to start by just you know understanding about your experience uh, in university a little bit more because you said that you started your own first first company in college. Yeah. Um, how was it like, you know, in a time, I guess, 10, more than 10 years ago, something like that in, in Brazil, uh -huh. right? It must be very different from the United States. You must have... Yeah, it's different than the United States and it's different than Brazil today. Yeah. Because 15 years ago, Brazil had some, has some, some small initiatives in some universities trying to teach uh, 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 students how to, uh, to be an entrepreneur. But it was just small initiatives, and there were just a couple of, of incubators mm -hmm. uh, 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 around some special cities. And right. fortunately, my city we had two or three incubators, and and being honest, I, I learned by myself. I I learn with life, so I learn with my mistakes. Mm -hmm. So th these incubators helped me. Uh, uh, to get to get a, a, an office in in a, in, a, in a building, but I learned how to sell by myself, trying making mistakes, listening feedbacks, receiving feedbacks, and learning with my mistakes. And and yeah, that th this was the process. We we at that time we didn't have a, a structure in the country to to teach students how to be an entrepreneur. And, and now I see some, some improvements in, in the Brazilian market, but we can't compare with Silicon Valley, for example, you, you, you mentioned the United States. Here, when you go to, to a university like Harvard or Stanford or Berkeley, you feel the entrepreneurship in the air. So when you talk with students, most of them have, they have plans to open their, their startup. Right. And when you talk with teachers, the teachers, they, they help with a lot of startups. So this doesn't happen in Brazil in the scale that we have here. We have some initiatives, but we don't have the whole st system to help entrepreneurship. Mm, I see, I see. So uh, I guess you, you said about the mistakes and whatnot. What is the most valuable thing you learned? You know, would it be sales? Would it be, I guess, you know, Building confidence. I think a listen your user. Listening to your user. Listen to your user is I think it's the most important thing I I, I, I learned. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes when an entrepreneur starts a project, he is in love with his his project. Absolutely. And it's the same that the relationship you have with your daughter or your son, your kid. Uh, it's difficult to see their mistakes, to find uh, mistakes in this re relationship because, because there is so much love in this relationship right. that sometimes you, you, get pro you, 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 you find problems to, to see the reality. And, and when you talk with your customers, when you listen to your customers, when you are open for feedbacks, you start seeing the truth. So this, I think, is the most important thing I learned. Mm, that's very interesting. And you said that uh, I guess you had a few progressions here. You moved from game, from enterprise to game to mobility marketing, um, and then getting acquired. How was that experience like? You know, getting acquired from uh, your own company. Then now you're part of this big organization, working, I guess, maybe part of your own original company or not. Uh, how was it like? It's very interesting because. The, the, I think that everything depends on the culture of the company and how company deals with innovation and opportunities internally. So, I, I today I am an employee of the company and by coincidence I am a shareholder. But I don't feel as a shareholder. I feel as an entrepreneur inside my own company. Yeah. So, for example, I'm here in Silicon Valley. I cannot follow all the rules or the goals that the headquarters sent to me. I have to think out of the box. I have to look for other opportunities. Right. I have to talk with other entrepreneurs and partners to learn and, and try to find opportunities. So in the daily basis, I feel like I am an entrepreneur inside a company that I am an employee. Officially, technically, I am an employee and I have shares of the company. But, but 
like the daily basis I feel as an entrepreneur. So you're always on that, that yeah. beta mentality. Yeah, and, and the company <laughs> needs, I think the great value that a company has and I, I love this in, in our company, is you have to reinvent yourself every day. So the technology changes very fast, so fast, and you see so amazing new companies arriving to the market and, and with great ideas. For example, Instagram, 15 guys with a great product. So everything is so, in two years, they, they, they start from zero to one billion dollar valuation. So if you, if you don't feel motivated to reinvent yourself every day, you will lose the game. Right. So basically, this is the philosophy of our company. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, especially when we're talking about mobile today, um, it's, it's a huge space and it's getting very hot. People are having a hype. What do you see as the future? Now that you're part of a big company, you're the stakeholder, what do you see? The future, I think mobile is by far the, 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 the the main Pacific revolution that we will see. Uh, this is obvious. Um, I see. I see mobile changing people's life in healthcare and in 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 entertainment. So I think people will change the the behavior to interact with entertainment. So I I don't believe that people will watch a movie like they watch today, I think that it will be super different. For example, today people don't keep just watching a, a, a soccer game or, or a football game on TV. Yeah. They, or tennis, they watch and they talk with friends. So it's a different experience. Mm -hmm. And, and, and this, will, this will change so fast that I, I, I have no way, I have some ideas, but I, I cannot uh, tell you for sure what is the end of this this story. Um, so so again, what what is the future? I think mobile uh, 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 will revolutionize the, the 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 world. And I'm connected with Brazil and Latin America, so I, uh, there is there is a Pacific revolution happening in Latin America, basically because the middle class or more than half of the Latin America population. They, they, now they have economic power to access content to internet. Absolutely. Most of our users never access internet. So for example, in Brazil, we have 240 million mobile subscribers, the, 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 the whole country, mobile users that own a cell phone and they have a, a, a plan with a carrier, 240 million. And we have only 80 million internet users in the country. So a lot of people in Brazil never access internet. Do you have an idea about the, the opportunity that we have here? So most of the, this population, they will have the first internet access using a smartphone in the next two or three years. Yeah. So this is infinite. This is, this, the opportunity is immense. Absolutely. So I believe that in this kind of revolution, what, what, what the, the technology will offer to these guys. So I see, uh, I'm very excited with these, these opportunities. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, absolutely. Those are all the times we have, but uh, you know, I appreciate your interview. It's definitely very insightful. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, That's your opinion.